Good morning, and uh, I remember again, please be seated. So uh, there are very few announcements this morning, excuse me. <clears throat> but let's start off with the birthdays. Um, happy birthday to uh, Janet O'Meara, Donna Mae Sidarius, Margie Melville, and um, so a joyous time to you on your special day. Um, one other announcement, uh, don't forget that next Sunday, as in one week today, July the 14th, we have Anne Arbor coming from the UK, and she's going to be preaching, and she'll be preaching on uh, essentially slavery or human trafficking. And after that, uh, we welcome you to come to the large room where there will be uh, a small reception and uh, some goodies and what have you. And then Anne will be available for any questions and to talk about her work and actually what she does. Does anybody have any other announcements that are not listed on the bulletin? No? Well then let's begin our worship this morning with our opening hymn, hymn number 37, which is We'll Sing in the Morning, hymn number 37. Good morning. So, I have three more bulletins here, if some needs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's start our service. It is always a top of mountain moment, wonderful moment, when we worship our Lord and receive his blessings. So, page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's say together, Almighty God, to you, you are heart and soul, all, all desires know, and for you no sick and suffering, and the thoughts of our hearts, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfect our will, and work in mind of our holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
And now, let us say together the collect of the day printed in our bulletin. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that to do at least to our children, we do also for him. Give us will to serve others as your servant of all, who gave his life and life for us, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the God's Word. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Then all the tribes of Israel went to David at Hebron and told him, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, when Saul was our king, you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord told you, you will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be Israel's leader. So there at Hebron, King David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel, and they anointed him king of Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 40 years in all. He had reigned over Judah from Hebron for seven years and six months, and from Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah for 33 years. So David made the fortress his home, and he called it the city of David. He extended the city, starting at the supporting terraces and working inward, and David became more and more powerful because the Lord of heaven's armies was with him. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is found on the insert, and if you don't have the bulletin, it's page 765. We'll read responsibly. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion. The very center of the world and the city of the great king. God is in her citadels. He is known among the Jerusalem. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled. They marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. As we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God has established us forever. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God. In the midst of your death. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Make the circuit of Zion. Walk round about her. Count the numbers of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds. And you can tell those who come after her. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our God forever and ever. Gracious God, you, you have made us fellow citizens with the saints in the city of your eternal light. In the time of storm, when the foundations shake, teach us to wait in silence on your steadfast and transforming love, made known to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. 
When I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I do know that I was caught up into paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell. That weakness, that experience is worth boasting about, but I am not going to do it. I will boast only about my, weak, my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth, but I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from being proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hear what the Spirit is saying. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. 
The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and the men who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere, except in this own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village teaching the people, and he called his twelve disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick, no food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a charge of clothes. Wherever you go, he said, stay in the same house until you leave town. But if any place refuses to welcome you or listen to you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their fate. So their disciple went out, telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, anointing them with olive oil. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today we have a strong and a wonderful gospel in front of us because this gospel teach us about the mission of Jesus, but not just about the mission of Jesus. This gospel taught us about the disciples' mission and our mission as well. Because when we are here talking about the gospel, talk about Jesus, we aren't talking just about things that happened 22,000, 24 years ago. It's like just telling a history. No, not at all. We are through this history, we are updating our mission here and now in this wonderful town called Brockville. Yeah, we are talking about our mission as a disciples, sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Creator, and Redeemer. So, today's gospel teach us about, first of all, Jesus was disappointed because his own people in his own town, own village, like uh, weren't um, understanding what Jesus could heal people. Because they are saying, well, we know, we know him. He is the son of Mary. He is the son of Joseph. Uh, the carpenter, we know here uh, how, how he can perform such miracles things. And uh, 
It makes me reflect that sometimes we have a special neighbor and we, we just don't know. We just don't have this knowledge, but sometimes we have a really special neighbor. And uh, yeah, we cannot recognize how, oh no, I know that guy, he was playing football with me. When I was young, how could he become a doctor now? It's a PhD, blah, blah, blah. It is a simple guy. It's the son of, of Joseph. Well, be careful. Maybe you have a super special guy near you, close to our house, or a saintly people, and you just don't know. So, this is the first part of the gospel. Jesus was disappointed because his friends, they weren't recognizing um, his power, his sanctity. And the second part, Jesus sent his disciples to village in village, uh, to preach about him, and he gave power and uh, wonderful counseling for his disciples as well. Saying, well, just use one alba, not two, <laughs> just use one sandal, and like uh, interesting counseling is in terms of put your, put your heart, your mind, and your soul in me, Put your mind, put your, your mission in God's hands, not in your ability. But I will give you power to preach in my name. However, be aware that I know you have problems during your journey. It means some people will listen to you, but another one not. Some people will just ignore you, like mute your microphone, <laughs> and you keep talking. But another one, you adjust the volume of your microphone and will be pay attention in you because you'll be preaching in my name. Be aware that you have problems in your mission. However, I will be with you, always. In other words, if people ignore you, remove, and I think this is a strong part, remove into the dust of your sandals and keep going to another village. I think it is absolutely makes a big sense for me because I'm aware that sometimes people I think just pretend that I listen to me and listen to you when we are talk about God and uh, another thing that I think is positive is when people think you and I are like uh, exquisite people because we are Christians why can you go to the church? What's the meaning of that? Oh no, let's play football. And let's do something different. I think it makes sense to go to the church every Sunday. Are you sure that you go to the church every Sunday? And I say, yes, for sure. And why? So for me and you, I think Sunday is our gas station. Yeah. You cannot stop to receive gas because you will stop in our spirit spirituality. So I like when people say, mm, uh, Rogério is, is a little bit different. Uh, he's a church person. Amen, I am. And I'm proud of that. And Jesus said, be aware of that. You have troubles. Some people will listen to you, but another one, we just ignore you. But I will be with you. When you move to another town, another village, I will be with you. Because 
I need, and this is the wonderful part. Jesus is talking to us today. I need your feet. I need your hands. I need your mind, your brain, your soul. I need you. I need you brings me for all nations. I need your help, my son, my child, and I love you. And I give you power to healing people. And then walk into the conclusion of the, today's reflection. First of all, I think you have three, 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 three teachings about this gospel. And the first of all is we are reflecting about Jesus' healing mission. Second one, Jesus gave to us the same power, the same capacity to, to help people that are suffering. And I'm not talking about wonderful miracles, casting out demons. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking just sometimes we just simply should offer our two ears and sometimes our unique mouth. I think just listen more. And sometimes I think you have had this experience already. Someone looked for you and talked, 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 talked. And then when he or she leave, Jesus said, thank you so much. You helped me a lot. And I said, well, but I just listened to you. That's what he or she was in need at that moment. And this is a healing moment and this is a healing process. So that is your mission. That's my mission. You should help people to feel healed, to feel recovered, to feel included, to feel beloved, part of our family, because you are the family of God. And this building, it's not the house of God. This building is the home of God. And houses, home has different meanings. House is like a building, but home is a place when you feel welcomed, when you feel loved, included, when you feel important. This is a home of God. And our house should become a home. By the way, like the, the parable, uh, when you have a tree, the birds will build a nest there and enjoy their shed. This is our mission, to offer shed, or shade, shed. Thank you. To offer comfort to people. To say, God love you, and I love you too, because I'm the son of God. And then, if you are as well, surely you are brothers, and you are sisters. So, let's conclude with this reflection that Jesus needs us to keep fulfill fulfilling his mission that is healing our world. Wonderful, beautiful, but sometimes chaotic as well. It's our mission when we we'll, uh, listen from, when you listen from me or another officiant, our worship ended and our service begin. It is about that we are talking. Our service is to go and to, to offer the healing of God through the Word. Amen. And let us pray. Dear God, we are thankful for your mercy that is renewed every morning. We are grateful because we are here receiving your love, receiving your healing receiving your compassion. And we ask it to you, help us to keep going. Just sometimes not be in prison of the past. Help us to understand that sometimes you should just remove the dust and looking for another place, looking for another people 
that you be aware and that you be ready to listen to you through us. Encourage us, give us hope, love, and joy in our mission as your disciples. Amen. My friends, now I invite you, let's renew our faith through our Apostles' Creed, page 189, 189, and if you'll be able, please stand, and let's renew our faith, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the front of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is descending to the dead. In the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. And he sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. They believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now please be seated for our prayers. Our intercessions this morning will include the morning with me, beginning on page uh, 117. Page 117. And let's begin by giving thanks for all the blessings that we've received in this life, for happiness and health, prosperity and peace, for the privilege of life in a calm and peaceful country where the rule of law prevails, for the beauty of creation, for God's love, the love of our family and friends, and God's love surrounding and sustaining us day by day. God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive the, these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. We ask for peace in our world, in a world that so desperately is in need of peace. And we think today especially of Israel and Gaza and Lebanon, of Haiti, the Congo, Sudan, and Tigray, and all other tr troubled parts of our small and connected world. We uphold the victims of all natural disasters, fires and floods, earthquakes, and all the effects of global warming and climate change. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Lord, have mercy. We uphold the poor, the hungry, the homeless, all those in faraway lands and those closer to home. We ask your blessing on our Sunday supper this afternoon as we welcome guests from our community into our parish home. We ask your blessing too on our cooperative care center, on all those who work and volunteer there, those who are involved in the search for more suitable premises, seeking to meet the needs, the increasing needs of our community more fully. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need and we pray for the church. In our parish cycle today, we uphold uh, Robert and Catherine Bolton, Nick and Minna Cornelis, A.J. Cottrell, and Millie Craig. We pray for our bishop, William, for our clergy, 
Father, Rog Father Michael, Father Rogerio, Father George, our staff, and our wardens, and for all who are sick, those in our parish prayer list, and all others who are on our hearts. Let us ask the Lord to renew the Church through the power of his life-giving Spirit. Lord, Life-giving God, heal our lives, that we may acknowledge your wonderful deeds and offer you thanks from generation to generation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our confession and absolution, dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and in infinite mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let's confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what have left undone. We have not loved you with a holy heart. We have not loved as your neighbors as yourselves. Virtually sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in our will and walk in our ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all our sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you'll be able, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace. And now we will prepare the altar for the second part of our service. You be the Holy Communion. And our offertory hymn is 537. 537.
Let's pray together, printed in our bulletin, the prayer of the gifts. God of heaven and earth, receive our sacrifice of praise and straighten us for the perfect freedom of your servant. Through our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In our Eucharistic prayer, it's number two, page 196. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word to whom you have created all things. By the power of your Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as of one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and the Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross. That they might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with your creation, we raise our voice to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he has handed over to suffering and death, he took bread and he gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remember, therefore, his death and resurrection. We offer you this bread and this cup. giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in our presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, gathered into one all who share in these sacred mysteries. 
filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirm their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant Jesus Christ. All glory and the honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. The breaking of bread, sentence number one. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever has come to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. My friends, the gifts of God is for us, people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray together our prayer after communion. Our God, may you who share in these holy things never fail to serve you in our world. And so come to the fullness of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of the God Almighty that always surpasses our understanding. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And our concluding hymn, 467. Just as a reminder, you notice that the bulletin this week has, is the bulletin for the, this Sunday and the coming three Sundays. Um, so please make sure that if you take it home to bring it back again, or if you do leave it here, just leave it on the back there rather than putting it into the uh, recycle bin. Uh, we'll close our prayer this morning by reading the household prayer on the back of your prayer sheet. And I know this is kind of long to do together, but let's do it together anyway, because it's a very powerful prayer, I think. So together, fire of life, thank you for bringing me safely through the night. As this day dawns, let me receive it as a gift and a blessing. Open my mind and senses to be fully awake to you. Attune my body to the rhythms of the day, so that I can love and serve others as you guide me. If I experience hardship or pain, or if I am exposed to danger, send your Holy Spirit to help me put my trust more fully in you. Remind me that in life and in death, I belong to you. Let me walk gently on the earth. Thank you for your providence and grace. Let me dance joyfully with you. 
mindful that I share movement with the planets and stars. When the day is done and it is time to rest, grant that I can offer the day to you with thanksgiving. I offer my prayer in the name of the beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like also just to share one other little thing that uh, I just shared with Ted. And uh, our hymn today, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, we sang. Um, my biological grandfather, I never knew he died before I was born. But um, that was always made clear to me by, I guess, my grandmother and great aunt, that that was one of his favorite hymns. And I can never hear it sung now without feeling his presence. And for that, God, I thank you. Our worship is now complete. Let us go forth to serve the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>